Great, so in this video, we try to work out the area of a triangle in uh, a Cartesian setup. That means if you know the vertices of uh, the coordinates of the vertices of a triangle here, A, B, and C, then what should be the area of such a triangle? So let me write that down here. Say we have a triangle as drawn in white, um, triangle A, B, C, and uh, A has the coordinates x sub a comma y sub a b would have the coordinates say x sub b comma y sub b c would have x sub c comma y sub c with that information given we want to ask ourselves what is the area of the triangle of the triangle abc right this is what we need to answer and uh, to do that we must try to break the area in terms of an addition and a subtraction and what i mean by that is if we if we call the points directly below, below the points of the vertices as uh, respectively as a sub a prime b prime and c prime then we would have the area of triangle abc which is this would be equal to well the area of the quadrilateral a b b prime and a b prime and a prime sorry so that's like abba and uh, add that to the quadrilateral of b c c prime and b prime b c c prime and b prime and subtract from that the area of the quadrilateral um a c c prime and a prime so a c c prime and a prime if we can have such a relation okay that's a very flimsy outline I'll just ignore that. If we have such a relation and if we are able to calculate the areas of, uh, well, the quadrilaterals A, B, B prime and A, B, C, C prime and B prime, A, C, C prime and A prime, then we can subtract and add certain amounts of them to get the area of the triangle. And you see why I have done this is because this area of A, B, C is enclosed within uh, the bigger areas as defined by the quadrilaterals of this quadrilateral right there and of this quadrilateral right there if we add these two quadrilaterals a b b prime and a prime and b c c prime and b prime then we get a total area that includes the area of the triangle but it also has an extra area of a c c prime and a prime and that is the same area that we must suppress in order to get the exact value for the area of the triangle now that is one way to think of it. The other way to think of it, just for clarity, would be, well, what is the area, what's the area of uh, the, well, not the quadrilateral, but rather the, the pentagon of uh, A, B, C, C prime and A prime. So the area of, well, A, B, C, C prime and A prime. What's the area of that? Well, I can divide that area into two parts, either by the first quadrilateral, A, B, B prime and A prime, this would be equal to a, b, b prime, and a prime. Let me change my color for, that, for this. Um, yeah, so let me write that again. So what's the area of this um, pentagon, which is the entire big polygon that I've drawn here? So that's a pentagon because it has five sides. An asymmetric one because a triangle could be anything and oriented in any particular way. We don't really care about that. So what's the area enclosed in this entire uh, blue structure? That's what I'm calling the area of A, B, C, C prime and A prime. What's the area of that? Well, I can define the area into two halves, not two halves, but two parts rather. First part including A, B, B prime and A prime. Area A, B, B prime and A prime. So that's this first one. And I can add that to the area of the remaining one, which is B, C, C prime, and B prime, which is the other half, separated by the dashed um, red line. The other way to think of that is, uh, well, I don't want the red line to divide the structure. I want the white line to divide the structure. So we would have the same area of the entire pentagon to be, well, the area of the triangle, A, B, C. First part of that, and the second part of that would be area of the quadrilateral, well, A, C, C prime, and A prime. Since we know that both these results are the same, because they represent the same area of the entire pentagon, 
Then we have this relation, the area of the triangle plus some area equals to the sum of the other two. And we can isolate, make area of the triangle ABC the subject, and subtract ACC prime and A prime from both the sides to get the area of ABC would be equal to the area of the quadrilateral ABB prime and A prime added to the area BC, C prime and B prime, and take away from that the area of the quadrilateral ACC prime and A prime, which is the same thing as what we got in the first place right there. So there are two ways to think of this, and once we've broken down the area, we can work ahead. So that was the first step of realizing what the area of the triangle would be. Alrighty, so now that we know that the area can be broken down into these, and in order to find the area of the triangle, we just need to evaluate the areas of the quadrilaterals, and then write them in this order and simplify it. So let's let's tackle one quadrilateral at a, tri at a time. Quadrilateral, well, A, B, B prime, and A prime. But at this point, you may be thinking, well, we don't know how to work out areas of triangles in the first place. How do we know the areas of quadrilaterals? Oh, well, you're right, we don't. And uh, it gets tougher if we add more sides to our polygon. But if you realize that the lines that we dropped from B, A, and C, the dashed ones, and the one which are now hidden by the blue lines, are all parallel. And if they are parallel, that means two sides of this quadrilateral A, B, B prime, and A, A, B, B prime, and A, are parallel. And if they are parallel, that means our quadrilateral becomes a trapezium. Like so. And the trapezium has a wonderful property of its area. So if we draw a trapezium here, say like so, the only thing that's really necessary in order to draw a trapezium is to have opposite one pair of opposite sides to be parallel to each other, like so. And if these two sides are parallel, then this is a trapezium in all right. Therefore, we can now evaluate the area of the trapezium. And in order to do that, we can either resolve to the formula that we know, that if this side is of the length A, this is the length B, and the distance between them is H, and that defines the trapezium, then the area of the trapezium would be equal to half times the height times the sum of the parallel sides A plus B. And if you don't know where this comes from, then uh, I will post another video in which we work out the area of A trapezium, and I'll link it to this. So anyway, so far, we know that the area of the trapezium is half times the distance bet between the parallel lines multiplied by the, the sum of the parallel lines. So here, the, the, the distance between the parallel lines would be this. And similarly, for the trapezium BCC prime and B, that distance would be this. Similarly, for ACC prime and A prime, that distance would be this. And these distances are measured parallel to the x-axis, therefore these would just be the difference in the x-coordinates. And what do I mean by that? Well, let's tackle the trapezium A, B, B prime and A prime first. So, the area of this trapezium would be half H times the sum of the parallel sides. Let me write that just for representation. Now I can substitute for values of H, A and B. So let's try to work out what H is in the first in our trapezium A B B common A. H is the distance between the parallel sides, as I have been saying it many times now. So we must realize that H is this distance represented in white. And this length would be nothing but XB minus XA. And this length here would be the difference in the in the x coordinates, like I did for the first case, and that would be XC minus XB. And what would, be, what would be the total length? Well, there are many ways to think of it. One way is to look at this as, um, well, xc minus xa from the endpoints of the coordinates c and a. But the other way to think of this is just to add xb minus xa to xc minus xb. And if you do that, you would get xc minus xa. Same as what we would have gotten by doing it the other way. Anyway, now we know the heights of all our trapeziums in the, all, all the three trapeziums now. Therefore, we know the h values. What about a and b? Well, a and b are this length of the two parallel sides. In the first case, a would be the height at which point a is located from the x-axis, and b would be the height at which b is located from the x-axis, and c, similarly, as we would employ that for our remaining two terms, would be the height at which c is located from the x-axis. 
and the heights in coordinate systems are nothing but the y components or the y coordinates. Therefore, we can now write the formula of half h times a plus b as half h for the first case would be x b minus x a because it's a b b prime and a prime multiplied by the sum of this of the heights which would be y b plus y a. Similarly, we would have the same relations for the the quadrilateral b c c prime and b prime. And if you look back at the figure, b, c, c prime and b prime, the height now would be this distance right there. And this distance is nothing but xc minus xb, multiplied by the height in of, of both the points, b and c. The sum of that, rather, and the sum would be y sub b plus y sub c. Similarly, we can work this out for the quadrilateral a, c, c prime and a prime. And that would also yield a similar similar form of x sub c minus x a plus y a plus y c. Therefore now we have our three expressions of the area of the of the, the quadrilaterals. The first for a b b prime and a, b c c prime and b prime, and a c c prime and a prime. What we need to do now to find the area of the triangle a b c would be to add this and this and subtract this. I will try to do that here by writing it as follows. Half times, well, I can actually like get rid of that, like so, and write this like so. All right, so what would be the area of A, B, B prime, and A prime? Looking back at the formula that we ended up finding, the area of the triangle, A, B, C, would now be half the area of a, b, b prime and a prime. If you go back in the video, you will know that that would be x, b minus x, a, y, b plus y, a. You add that to the area of b, c, c prime and b prime, which would be half x, b, sorry, x sub c minus x sub b multiplied by y, c plus y, b. And you subtract from all that half times x sub c minus x sub a times y a plus y c. And you write that as follows. So you simplify this, which is very much required at this point. We can take half as a common factor out of the expression and write the remaining thing as x b minus x sub a times y b plus y sub a. We can add this now to the second term, which is xc minus xb multiplied by yc plus yb. And we can subtract from that the last term, x sub c minus x sub a times ya plus y sub c. This should be the area of the triangle. But we can also simplify this a bit more, as you would have found it in books. To, in order to do that now, we must um, expand this. So I'll expand this below and try to write the reduced form there. Expanding this as follows, taking the half common factor out of the expression, we can multiply this as follows. Let me change my pen now. Um, so the first term would actually give you four subterms as xb times yb, the first term. Second term would be plus xb ya minus xa yb minus xa ya and so for the second term let's do that as well that would be xc yc first two terms plus x sub c y sub b minus xb yc minus xb and yb and we must not forget the last term which would come as follows x sub c y sub a plus x sub c y sub c minus x sub a y sub a minus x sub a y sub c. Remember that is enclosed in a negative sign there. 
All right, so that's a very ugly looking expression. What do we do with that? Well, we look for common terms, which we can cancel them out, hopefully. If you look at the first term here, which is x sub b multiplied by y sub b, I also notice a negative of that right there. That is negative x sub b and y sub b. We can cancel them out because they give zero as, as we sum them both. And same, similarly with the other terms of um, x sub c and y sub c, you get an x sub c and y sub c with a negative sign there, so that cancels out. Similarly, you have a minus x sub a, y sub a. What about that? Well, you have a plus x sub a, y sub a. Plus because the negative sign there, multiplied by the negative sign there, gives you a plus eventually. And that plus, or positive x a, y a, can actually cancel this term out. Therefore, we have gotten rid of that term as well. So all the symmetric points of x a, y a, x e, y c, and x b, y b are cancelled out. What we're left with now is a mixture. Uh, a more slightly mixture. And I can write that as follows here. Let me erase this now that we have worked that, worked that out. The area would therefore be half as a common factor, which was unchanged throughout our um, simplification. First term would be, well, if we look at it, that would be xb ya minus xa yb. The second let me group that out. And the second term would be plus, well, x c y b this minus x b y c, like so. And the last term would be plus, let me write this out as well, well that would be x a y c minus x e y a. Remember, because you had a negative sign initially, I have just replaced the plus with the, the negative with the, with the positive and the positive with the negative to give me this expression. And closing that in brackets, I have the following expression. And this is the expression for an area of a triangle. Now, at this point still, many of us are not convinced that this looks like a rather workable form. That, we, that means we cannot possibly remember this um, ugly looking um, expression. And what do we do with that? Well, we can employ the uh, properties of determinants. A determinant is given by a representation of numbers, say a, b, c, and d. And if we want to evaluate the determinant, this is written as a times d minus b times c, like so. And if you notice that we have a, d minus b, c type terms occurring in our expression, the first of them is this second of them is this, and the third of them is this. Therefore, we can very well use this, this determinant type of uh, representation to um, simplify our area expression. And we can do that as follows. Right, so if I, t if I write the area to be, well, this time negative half. If I write negative half now, I'm actually taking minus one common out of them. Therefore, all the terms will now become negative inside the bracket. And if all the terms become negative, I have an x sub a minus x sub a y sub b minus x sub b y sub a plus x sub b y sub c minus y sub b x sub c minus let me write it there minus x sub c y sub a well sorry plus x sub c y sub a minus y sub c x sub a right there. So this is our expression now. And what do we do with that? Well, if you look at this equation of the determinant, we can simplify this as follows. So the first term becomes x a y a x b y b. Because if I do that, then the first term would be x a y b minus x b y a which is the first term. And using the same logic, I can work out the second and the third points, like so. So the second term would be the determinant of this um, representation, x, b, y, b, x, c, y, c. Similarly, we can proceed on to write the last term, which would now be written as x, c, y, c, x, a, y, a, like so. So now our expression looks something that we can work with because if you look at the expression now, we have a negative half sign 
outside the total expression, but we also have a very cyclic um, way of writing the terms xa and ya, because the a follows the b. If you notice, these are the coordinates of the point b. And once we are done with that combination, we work the combination of b going to c, because these two are the, co the coordinates of point b, and these are the coordinates of point c. The last term goes back to a from c. So it's going to be going from a to b as a first term, from b to c as a second term, and from c to a as a third term. And that kind of adds up to give us this form. So if we are asked to calculate the area of our triangle, we would be writing this particular expression given the coordinates of a, b, c. But remember, we always go in a cyclic manner. We go from a to b, b to c, and c back to a. And we do that, and we write all the determinants, the, the three pairs in this, in this case, the three of the determinants, and then we add them up. But don't forget to multiply the entire expression by negative 1 by 2, and that just comes out for the maths. So I hope this video made sense, and this is the general area of a triangle given by the coordinates x, a, x, a, y, a, x, b, y, b, and x, c, y, c. And we've employed the methods of determinants.